I'm not, I'm not going to make a whole lot of announcements, but I'm going to tell you this. We must remember that this is the day the Lord has made. You know what? It's Palm Sunday. Y'all know what Palm Sunday is? That's when Jesus actually came into Jerusalem on the back of a donkey. Amen. Saddle Mark still hurt me. <laughs> yeah. So when he came in on Palm Sunday, why do they call it Palm Sunday? Because they were putting palm leaves down. You know, how many of us have talked about it over and over? You know, we're so thankful that God came into our life and be cursing him the next. Why do you make it so hard on me, God? Why do you have to be God today? Let me be God one day. <laughs> How many of us really think that we are all that, that God ought to send us a fax? God ought to send us an email. God ought to have our permission. We must remember what the Word of God says. Where was you when I formed the foundations of the earth? Did I have to come to you for advice then? So why do, I, why do you think I need to come to you now? We had a phenomenal Sunday school. We really did. If you missed it, guess what? We were in the book of Nehemiah. Please go back and read Nehemiah. See what God did in the book of Nehemiah for the wall around Jerusalem. You know what? I didn't even get into all the gates. I told everybody that was here. I could take a book of Nehemiah for the next 11 years and still find a lot in it. But I can tell you, our God has a plan <coughs> and a purpose for every one of us to be here today. You know what? Do you have to agree with him that he's got a purpose for you today? Or how many of you are marching to your own agenda today? I can tell you there's a difference. But please don't take my word for it. Ask God. Brother Rocky, are you ready for our prayer song today for I pray for? Yes, we are. All right. Let's get it. Let's kick it like a pig. And right. Okay. That's what we're doing. Good morning, church. Good morning. We're going to turn to page 641 and we're going to ask God to hear our prayer. We're going to sing through it twice and we're only going to say the amen on the last part of the second one. Hear our prayer, O Lord. Hear our prayer. Satan not even to be allowed in this house 
but all on this property, but Father, that you are everywhere that Satan has to flee. So Lord, we ask one more time for those that are sick, those that are hurting, those that are struggling, that Father, you and you alone hear our prayers for them and you answer them. And Lord, we ask these things in Christ Jesus' name. Amen. 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 It's Palm Sunday, church. Happy Palm Sunday. Today God started his mission, and that's what I call it, his mission, because we all have a purpose on this earth, and his purpose was to come down here and save us. So We're going to sing about this is the day, because this is the day that the Lord has made. This is the day that he's, his saving us started. So we're going to turn to page 209, and we're going to sing this is the day. Raise your voices to the Lord. Yeah. And feel free to stand and do so as well. Me be on the ceiling by myself. Y'all need They're still turning. They're still turning. They're still turning. Let them turn. This is the day. This is the day. Church. Next, we're going to turn to page 342, and we're going to sing about the Rock of Ages.
Amen, amen. There's no stronger rock than just the faith you have in Jesus. Amen. All right, you guys, next we're going to do page 419, Family of God. If you're going to get up and give each other a big old hug. Like church house members. Church house members. We all family here. <laughs> and give each other a big hug and a and handshake and tell each other how much you love them. I'm so glad I'm a part of the family of God. I've been washed in the mountain. fish 
and feed thousands. So we're asking that, Father, you take the little that we have to glorify your kingdom. Lord, we fall short. So forgive us of that. And Lord, let us praise your name once again in song, in worship, and Father, in attendance. We need to hear from you today. So Father, send your message to the messenger for us. And Lord, we ask these things in Christ Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Sister Raina has our special. I'm not going to tell y'all she's special because she has a special. But I can tell you she's special because of who's in her. Amen. And she's going to glorify him by what she says. Amen. All right, church. I've done this song before for y'all, but this week it just felt fitting with it being Palm Sunday. Um... You know, we forget to thank God just for what Jesus did for us and, and everything that he's done for us on his earth. But the most important thing is when he died on that cross. So we always have to thank God for the man on that cross. So that's what this song's about. Shook our fist at Jesus and said, I hate you. 
Just because I admit it, don't make me a bad person. But I can tell you this. We take Jesus too lightly. We do not sell out to God like we should. Y'all remember, last week I was talking about the temple of God and how you're the temple. What would you do if I was telling you today I'm going to tell you how God destroys the temple? He will. He can. And I'll tell you how to do it. If we are the temple of God and we do not pick up our cross daily and die to self, how can He crucify us? How can He destroy our temple and make it His? See, I wish I had a God that would destroy me because that's what I deserve. Amen. I wish I had a God that would say, I'm going to destroy you. You know what? He did say that. Unless we pick up our cross. You know, last week I was talking about how we harbor filth in our temple. We ha harbor our ill feelings with other people in our temple. How many of y'all have thought about your worst enemy and brought them to church? Don't we? You know, I know when we're in the supermarket and we see our worst enemy coming down the aisle, how many of y'all go greet them instead of turning away from them? Is that soul not valuable to Jesus? Did he not die on the cross for that soul? See, I deserve for him to destroy me because of my wicked ways. Come on. But I can tell you this. Knowing Jesus left me here to be not ashamed of him. To tell others about him. You know, I had a young man that used to be in my preteen group that last week I talked to him and invited him to church. Y'all know he watched two of the videos after I spoke with him? Come on. Y'all know he sent me a text message this morning stating he was trying to make it here this morning <coughs> to be in church? Thank God. But the devil had a different opinion. The devil allowed someone to hit his truck and tear it up. Oh, man. The devil wanted him to take on-the-job training for a new job. <coughs> That's what the adversary does. And you know what? We have to be mindful that the devil is going to take and do his job. How many of us ever in our life have been so busy we didn't attend church service? God, I'm busy today. I don't have time for you. How many of us have gotten up out of bed without a prayer? You know, God deserves to wrap the sheets around your feet and make your nod and hit the floor where you listen to Him. But I'm going to tell you something. At the end day, when Jesus comes back, He's going to destroy those that are in opposition to Him. He may do it tomorrow at work. I don't know. You know what? It's His will, not mine. It's His place, not mine. It's His purpose and not mine. Remember, we're just getting into the start of the Easter season. How many of us really know what Easter's about? 
I would love to listen to you tell me the chronological order of the events that happened in the last seven days Christ was alive. How many of y'all could do that? How many of y'all could say, you know, Pastor, this happened, this happened, this happened, this happened, but yet we celebrate Palm Sunday, right? That's when Jesus come into our life, right? That's when Jesus come into our city, right? What happened after that? He went into the temple and destroyed the religious leaders. How many of y'all had your heart shattered last week after the message? See, God destroys the temple. And so with that being said, I'm going to tell you, I'm going to be in the book of Matthew, chapter 24. And watch what he did after he went out of the temple. Do y'all remember that he destroyed the temple and he was talking about it to his disciples and he told them, he said, the temple will be destroyed and I will rebuild it in three days? That's not a true statement, is it? How do you rebuild a building in three days? Yeah. You call Jesus and say, hey, I need a touch from the master. I need your hammer working on this building. Y'all do remember he was carpenter by trade, right? Mm -hmm. All right, Matthew 24, verse 1, and it says this, And Jesus went out and departed from the te temple, and his disciples came to him for to, to show him the buildings of the temple. And Jesus said unto them, See ye not all these things? Verily I say unto you, there shall not be left here one stone upon another that shall not be thrown down. And he said upon the Mount of Olives, and the disciples came unto him privately, saying, Tell us, when shall these things be? And what shall be the sign of thy coming and the end of the world? And Jesus answered and said unto them, Take heed that no man deceive you. For many shall come in my name, saying, I am Christ, and shall deceive many. And you shall hear wars and rumors of wars. See that ye be not troubled. For all these things must come to pass. But the end is not yet. Now, folks, I want to stop right there. Remember, we're talking about Jesus saying he would destroy the temple, man would, and he would rebuild it. Do you know that Jesus is telling them about his death? Do you know that Jesus is saying that's not the end? Do you know that God has given us Jesus to give us life? How do you destroy something and make it all? How do you take a building and destroy it and say not one stone will be on top of the other? But in three days, I'm going to rebuild that temple. I want, I want us to understand with God all things are possible. But with our thought, with our mind, with our heart, we cannot see God working in three days. <clears throat> so you know what? Let us bow and come before Him in our prayer today. Our most precious Heavenly Father, Lord, we do not understand how you can destroy the temple and rebuild it in three days. But Father, your word tells us not to lean in our own understanding, but to trust you. So Father, I want to say today, first and foremost, 
whatever I'm harboring in my temple today, Father, you destroy that where I can know the purpose of your temple today. And Father, how you can rebuild it and give life in three days. Lord, only you can do these things. Be glorified, Father. And Father, let your message go out into deaf ears today. That, Father, they can understand what you mean. They can change because of what you can deliver them from today. Father, whether it's drugs, alcohol, work, whatever it may be, you can rebuild, restore and reconcile. So Father, hide us behind your cross today that the world can no longer see us, but they see you. And we ask these things in Jesus Christ's name. Amen. Amen. You know, folks, I want to tell you something. God, this morning when He got you up, He had a purpose for your life even to the point of saying, in three days I can make you whole. Man, have you really thanked God for dying, sending His Son today to give you life? Some of us could get up every morning and, oh, God, thank you so much for my job. Thank you for my family. Thank you for the food I'm about to receive. Thank you. Thank you. None of those things can bring you life. But the Son of God can. You know, I know we all, and when I say this, I'm, I'm going to bring up last week again. When I was preaching about what trash was in the temple, and we had the church house mice in here last week, if it hadn't been for one little child making some noise, Everybody would have knew that I didn't have no one I was preaching to. You know what? The Word of God is designed and incorporated to either draw you to Him or drive you away from Him. Either you're going to say amen or you're going to say oh me. One of the two. But I want to tell you what God is talking about. God's Son says, you know what? I'm going to destroy all of this. And rebuild it upon the millstone that everybody rejected. Y'all do know that the rock that was in front of the tomb, the world rejected because of the imperfections in it. Have y'all ever studied the stone that was hiding the doorway to the tomb? The imperfections of it made it hard to roll. The imperfections of it made it hard to move. God never takes something that is easy because man can get the glory. But I can tell you something. He'll take imperfect people and make them perfect. He will take imperfect ways and make them perfect. That's what God does. So watch what we're talking about. Remember Jesus approached the religious leaders in the temple last week, right? He went out of the temple and departed from it. He was ashamed what people had made the temple of God look like. He was angry at what they made it look like. How many of us is he ashamed of? How many of us are doing things with our temple he's ashamed of? But Jesus says, I will destroy the temple. 
The world will destroy the temple because they don't want to see the work of God going on. Come on. Do you know that's what the adversary does? The adversary wants to take those that are the temple of God and make them look bad to the world where he can destroy it. Why do you think he wants to destroy the temple? See, Jesus says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No mind comes to the Father except through me. You know what? We curse the world for mocking Jesus, don't we? We tell him, oh, that's my God. And we walk away with ill thoughts. Ill ways. Jesus is the only perfect being. Come on. And you know what? He's telling everybody, hey, the worldly temples will be destroyed. But I'm going to rebuild it in three days. Let me ask you a question, folks. And I want you to think about it. Not because I want you convicted today, but I want you to know who Jesus is. Has Jesus ever come in your life and destroyed your temple? Cleaned it out. And then said, follow me. And I'll make you fishers of men. Come on. You know, so many of us don't want to be the fishers of men. We don't want to be the messenger that has hardship. We don't want to be the missionary at our job. We tell God it's too hard. But God says, things of this world will pass away. Things how many of y'all have ever had a job and got fired from it? Or went changed and went to another job? Or, you know, did without a job for a while? Guess what? You made it through it, didn't you? Do you think that was you doing that? I, I love people telling me, Woo! Say, you preach too hard to you people. <laughs> Right. You know what? My job is not to make you feel good. My job is when you go out that door, you act like Jesus. Don't act like you're a preacher. Come on, because your preacher ain't no good. According to the word, it's a worm, a maggot. That's what I am. But I can tell you one thing: God didn't call me to be ashamed of Him. God called me to preach. Amen. And you know what? Sometimes the Word of God hurts. Because either you line up with God or you fight against God. One of the two. And you know what? If God came back today, you would be equipped to go to heaven if you adhere to His Word. Not here to bind because I'll lie to you. I'll steal from you. I'll cheat from you. You know why? I'm just a man. Right. But let me tell you a little bit about my Jesus. Yeah, reach it. Come on. My Jesus came and said, look, everything you want to do, you can destroy it and I'll build it back. I'll reconcile it. I'll restore it. I'll make it whole. God takes the imperfectness of our walk and uses it for His glory. Isn't it amazing how He can take a mess and turn it into a message? He can take our infractions and use it for His glory. You know why? He's the only one that deserves the glory. Come on. 
Come on. So if he didn't reveal our faults, how could he promote life? Oh, he's right in town on a donkey. Y'all heard me say, well, ago, I got saddle marks too. You know why? Because God was struggling. I was struggling with God when he, God called me to preach. Father, I'm not worthy. I can't do that. How many of us right now are thinking thoughts? God, I can't do what you called me to do. There's infractions. There's faults. And God says, trust me. Follow me. Watch this. I'm going to move on. I've got about 10 minutes left. <coughs> we must understand that what we're seeing right now is the Word of God coming to truth. I want to tell, tell y'all something. Brother Rocky is wise beyond all his years. You know, we talked in our Sunday school about the wall that Nehemiah was building back for protection of the city. What do you think is happening with the building of the wall in our own country? We can't do that. We can't afford that. We can't, we can't, we can't. But how many of us won't even let the walls in our life be built where we're not finding Jesus. Watch this. Here it comes. For many shall come in my name saying I am Christ and shall deceive many. You shall hear of wars and rumors of wars. See that ye be not troubled for all these things must come to pass. But the end is not yet. Do, do you understand that the ways of the world has to happen for Christ to return? How many of us are praising God for the warning in His Word of what is yet to come? See, we don't trust Jesus to rebuild our temple. We're afraid He's going to destroy our temple. Ooh, it got quiet again. Do I need to throw some cheese on the ground? The church house mice are running rapid in here. How many of us are mad at what's happening in the world and not praising God for taking care of us in it? You see what I'm saying? We're marching to the beat of our own drum. We're not letting Jesus clean out the temple. We're not trusting that he can rebuild it. What did he say every time the Christians, the disciples failed in the world? Do y'all remember? He would correct them with the statement of, Oh, ye of little faith. Do you not have faith in Jesus that He can rebuild it, restore it, reconcile it, rebuild whatever He wants to do with it? Why are we walking around with a frown? You know, if, you, if all you can do is frown, you need to learn to walk on your hands. Turn your frown upside down. If we really believe this is the day that the Lord has made, let us rejoice and be glad in it. As Christians, we ought to be shouting hallelujah right now. Because we know the Word of God is coming into fruition for our life right now. Hallelujah. We know that the Word of God is true. And if he says, I, this got to be destroyed, guess what? It needs to be destroyed. If he says, I'm going to rebuild it, guess what? Doesn't the word say there will be a new heaven and a new earth? Whatever he desires to do, we ought to trust him. 
Ooh, I, I, I can tell you, I'm a little excited for today. Mm -hmm. Not because of anything I've done, but because of what he does. You know, if he needs to destroy me, that one can have life. That's what I deserve. Mm -hmm. How could I ask something better of what I deserve? You know what? I'm fixing to say this. Isn't it a terrible situation when you value someone else's life more than your own? Doesn't the Word of God say, Greater love hath no man except he lay down his life for his brother? Some of you are so afraid of death, you cannot, you don't want to hear the D word. I've seen some of you cringe when I mention death. Do you know that the Word of God says we no longer have to die? But we're living a new life. Why? Jesus paid it off. One drop of blood of Jesus could have saved the whole world. But he gave it all. He took every sin that we could ever even imagine. Could what did he say when he took that sin? He was in the garden praying, sweating as if it was drops of blood. And he said, Father, if this cup can pass for me, let it pass. If not, bring it on. I'll take it. Let thy will be done. How many of us tell Jesus, let thy will be done in our life? See, I'm telling you, I'm not here to sugarcoat this word. The problem is, most of us can't absorb it. Have you ever seen a sponge get so old it will not absorb water anymore? And when you pick it up, it feels crusty? How many of us are that sponge who can't absorb Jesus anymore? You know what? It's amazing how you get a sponge that's that way and you start putting it under water and squeezing it a little bit. And it absorbs the water a little bit. You ever seen a grape go through a wine press? It squishes the bejeebies out of the grape. And it only takes what is pure. Is Jesus pressing you right now? To say, come and follow me. Trust me. I got you. You know what? I've seen some of y'all eat a hamburger. One for you. And you absorb it awful fast. Why? You're afraid someone's going to steal a bite of it from you? But isn't that what we want from God's Word? Just give it to a short sweep, send us out the door. Are you hungry, Daddy? Okay. You know, folks, I want to tell you something. I still got seven minutes. <laughs> Let me read verse 17. Let him which is on the housetop not come down and take anything out of his house. Do you know what? God doesn't want you to hold on to your past. He wants you to go to your future. Paul says, keep your eye on the prize. Run the race. Don't worry about what's behind you. Move on. Satan tells you, hey man, look behind you. You're not worthy of this. And Jesus is saying the whole time, you have been forgiven. You have been redeemed. You are the child of God. Why do we keep running back to take things out of our house? We're doubt. Yeah. 
We're afraid. We're ashamed. How many of y'all wake up in the morning and say, I'm a child of God. Thank you, Jesus. You know what? God says not to be ashamed. God knew who you were before He ever formed you in your mother's womb according to His word. All your imperfections, He's already redeemed. He's already forgiven. So why do you think Satan wants you to remember? See, you will be held back because you can't move forward. Because you don't trust God in the temple. Watch, I, I'm, I'm telling you, I'm getting close to finishing up. Put verse three. Right now we're going to be in verse 45. It says, Who then is a faithful and wise servant whom his Lord hath made ruler over his household to give them meat in due season? Blessed is that servant whom his Lord, when he cometh, shall find so doing. Verily I say unto you that ye, or that he shall make him ruler over all his goods. But, and if that evil servant shall say in his heart, my, del my Lord delayeth his coming, and shall begin to smite his fellow servants, and eat and drink with the drunken, the Lord of that serpent shall come in that day when he looketh not for him, or in an hour that he is not aware of and shall cut him asunder and appoint him his portion with the hypocrites. There shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth. I want to tell you all a little story about a man on a cross. He was dying. And when he died on that cross, even those around him said he was who he said he was. Are we going to wait for Jesus to come back for us to say he was who he said he was? In the twinkle of an eye, your life can be taken and changed. Some of you are so busy harboring the trash in your home or going back to getting it that you can't understand. Jesus is coming back to destroy that which is in opposition to him. You know, folks, I want to say this. No man knoweth the hour nor the day that Jesus is coming back. So many people Maybe you're one of them. I'm not going to tell you you are, and I'm not going to tell you you're not. So many people in the world keep saying, I'm going to wait till tomorrow to know Jesus. I'm going to wait till tomorrow before I forgive my enemy. I'm going to wait till tomorrow before I forgive those that hurt me. But what happens if Jesus destroys the temple before you get it right? You know, there's a song that says it's too late to apologize. I want to tell you this. The Word of God is true. It's sharper than any two-edged sword. It's going to cut to and fro. And if it cuts you today, It'll cut your enemy tomorrow. But you have to take care of your house. You are responsible for what your heart feels. It's your choice. Do you really believe that Jesus died on the cross for you? Do you really believe that 
His blood covers your sin. If His blood can cover your sin, His blood can cover your enemy's sin too. How many of us are harboring and waiting for Jesus' return? I'll get it right before He returns. The next moment's not promised. Did y'all hear me say a while ago that a young man was trying to come to church today from Willis, Texas to be with us today? That's my God. Amen. But the adversary puts things in our path that makes us slow down. To make us change. We talked about that in our Sunday school hour this morning. And I want you to understand right before we leave today. This world is not here for you. It doesn't support you. It doesn't agree with you. It wants to kill, steal, and destroy you. Because you stand for the word of God which brings conviction to them. Guess what they did to Jesus just a couple days after he entered into town? They got mad at him because they were convicted <laughs> and brought. So you know what? I want to tell you this before we leave today. God loves you. God sent his son for you. God gave you a way out. He may not wait three days to return. He may just be waiting for your heart to get right. All he's waiting for is the last person that will that he knows will follow him to say, Here am I, Lord. If there's no one that can be left to be saved, there's no purpose of him staying at home. Jesus died for you. He cares for you. He loves you. Let us pray. Father, in the moment, the world that we know can change. So, Father, I'm not worried about the world. I'm worried about the lost and dying souls that are going to go to hell. Father, you are the living Savior. You said, I am the bread, the way, the truth, and the life. And so, Father, I pray right now that, Father, you change our heart, our mind, our body, and our hearts. That, Father, we're no longer in opposition to you, but, Father, we're in support. Lifting you, praising you, worshiping you, because you are who you said you are. The Messiah. The Alpha. The Omega. The beginning. The end. There is no greater person that we can turn to than you. So Father, fire our souls up. Let the light shine like never before. And Father, let us walk away out of here because we have been revived in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 Y'all are dismissed.